Hi, my name is Jamie de Jong, and I created this video for Math 135 at the University of Toronto, uh, specifically to look at an example of an optimization problem. So in this particular case, we'll be looking at a geometric problem, and we'll go through an example, and then I'll leave you with an exercise to work on. So the problem that we're going to be looking at here is to find the maximum area of a trapezoid inscribed inside a circle of radius r, where the base of the trapezoid is the diameter of the semicircle. Now, since this is a geometric problem, the first thing that we should do is draw uh, a picture of what this is talking about. That will help us to understand our goal. So, we start with a semicircle. And we're told we're putting a trapezoid inside it where the base is the diameter of the semicircle. So our trapezoid looks something like this. And the radius is r, so this length here is 2r. Now, you might be accustomed to finding the area of a trapezoid using um, an air, a formula involving the base and the top of it and the height. But in this case, we don't necessarily know a whole lot about the height of the trapezoid. So we're going to use a different method to uh, find a variable to describe the area width. So we're going to look at the midpoint here and consider drawing a line to each of the opposite vertices of this trapezoid. Now, since we're going from the center of the uh, circle to the outside, we know these lengths are the radius. How does that help? Well, in, we're interested in the placement of this point. This is going to um, determine the area of the trapezoid. So it's uh, a point that's always on the outside of the semicircle, and the question is how far around. So that indicates that we could look at the angle. So we'll take the angle between the um, diameter of the semicircle and the point uh, that's going to determine where that vertex is. Now, of course, on the other side, that means we also get an angle of theta. And the angle in the middle is pi minus 2 theta. So that gives us a picture of uh, what this trapezoid looks like. Now, we're interested in optimizing the area. So first of all, we need a formula for the area of the trapezoid in terms of theta. So uh, we have three triangles here. And you might recall that we can find the area of a triangle given two sides and the angle in between them. Uh, so if those two sides are A and B and the angle is theta, then we get um, a half AB sine of theta. And in this case, for, uh, let's call this our first triangle, we have this side, it's R. We have this side here, it's R and we have the angle in between, that's theta. So, the area of this first triangle is a half times the two sides, which are both r, so r squared times sine of theta. Now, we also have to add on uh, the other triangles, so this one opposite has exactly the same area by symmetry. And then we have the third triangle in the middle, which is again a half r squared, but this time it's sine of pi minus 2 theta. And we can simplify this slightly because the first two terms are equivalent. So we get r squared sine of theta plus a half r squared sine of pi minus 2 theta. So that gives us an expression for the area of the trapezoid in terms of the angle. 
and we're going to use it to uh, find the maximum area. So the problem now is essentially to find the absolute maximum of this function on some interval. Now, what's the smallest angle we could have? Well, that's uh, if we don't have one at all. So between zero and the point at which these two points meet, which is if we had the point all the way up here, so pi over two. So we're finding the absolute maximum of this function where theta is between zero and pi over two. Now, the first task is find uh, any critical points. So we want to differentiate a with respect to theta. So sine differentiates to cosine. We get r squared cosine of theta. And uh, sine again differentiates to cosine, but we also have to differentiate the piece inside, which is pi minus 2 theta. So we bring out a negative 2. This cancels with the half, so we get negative r squared cosine of pi minus 2 theta. And we find critical points by setting this equal to 0. So that means cosine of theta equals cosine of pi minus 2 theta. Now, when does that occur? Well, remember, theta is specifically in the interval 0 to 2 pi which means pi minus 2 theta is in an interval 0 to pi. And if you have a look at the graph of cosine, the only point at which this can uh, occur is if pi minus 2 theta equals theta. So that means pi is equal to 3 theta, so theta equals pi over 3. So we found a critical point, theta equals pi over 3, uh, gives a critical point. Now we want to find the absolute maximum, so we need to test the endpoints and test the value at the critical point. And whichever one is the largest will give us the absolute maximum. So, one of the endpoints was 0. We have r squared sine of theta, sine of 0 is 0. And then we have a half r squared sine of pi minus 2 theta, so sine of pi, and sine of pi is 0. So this gives us a value of 0. When we evaluate at pi over 2, we get r squared sine of pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, and then we get a half r squared sine of pi minus 2 theta, which is sine of 0, which is just 0, so this is r squared. Finally, we're interested in the area at pi over 3, our critical point. So we get r squared sine of pi over 3 plus r squared over 2 sine of pi over 3 because uh, pi minus 2 theta is still pi over 3. And we can use a triangle to uh, quickly check what sine of pi over 3 is. So this triangle is half of an equilateral triangle, and we get 1 here, a half over here, and root 3 over 2. So sine of pi over 3 is uh, root 3 over 2.
And if we simplify this a little bit, we'll get 3 root 3 over 2 r squared, which is root 27. Sorry, this should have been over 4. So we'll get root 27 over 4 r squared. We don't need to know. Um, exactly uh, as a decimal what this is, but it is greater than r squared. So pi over 3, root 27 over 4 r squared is the maximum. And now the question asked us for uh, the largest possible area. So we've determined it's root 27 over 4 uh, squared. And it's an area, uh, so it's uh, in the form of some kind of unit squared. Now we didn't specify any units for the radius of the original uh, circle, so in this case it's just units squared, whatever the units of the uh, semicircle in the first place were. So we've um, drawn a picture and found a formula in terms of the angle, and then the problem became uh, the question of finding the absolute maximum on an interval, which is something we already know how to do. Check the critical points and check the endpoints of the function, and whichever one is the highest is the absolute maximum. So, I'll leave you with a similar kind of exercise. Find the maximum area of, area of a rectangle inscribed inside a semicircle of radius r, where one side of the rectangle is along the diameter of the semicircle. If you have any questions, feel free to talk uh, to me in my office hours or ask questions on Piazza. Thank you.